Hey, I'm Kate from Kate's Travel Tips. So if you're watching this video, that probably means that you have a wedding coming up in Spain and you are not sure what to expect. Don't worry, I got you covered. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain 10 rules that you need to know to be the perfect wedding guest in Spain. So just a little backstory on how I created these tips. Uh, so I've been living in Andalusia since 2011 and all of these tips are based on my personal experience attending weddings over the years in Spain, uh, as well as advice from local friends as well as different uh, beauty and fashion blogs written by Spaniards. So without further ado, let's get to the video. Okay, so just for context, I am going to be reading off of the blog post that I wrote. Um, you want to get, you know, videos, links, photos, you can check out the blog link. I'll include it in the description of this video below. Um, so click that if you want more information on each of these uh, rules or tips that I'm going to cover in the video. So up first, uh, we've got most weddings are semi-formal. So in general, I would say that Spanish weddings are a lot more dressier or more formal than uh, American weddings. At least most of the weddings I've been to, I'm from Florida. So, you know, wearing wedges and a sundress, uh, guys wearing khakis and a blazer is pretty normal. Here, that is not the case. It's pretty dressy. Um, for example, I would feel underdressed if I wore wedges to a wedding here, but that's just me. Um, so for men, you're gonna normally wear a two-piece suit, so you're gonna have a matching jacket and slacks. Um, ladies are going to wear uh, a nice dress or a jumpsuit, uh, which are called monos, uh, with heels. So, uh, you know, if, you're in, if you have any doubt about what to wear, just go with a dressier option. Um, you can always ask the bride and groom too if you're not sure. Okay, so rule number two, uh, understand day versus night wedding attire. So in general, the rule is uh, day wedding equals short dress, night wedding equals long dress. That being said, people wear whatever they want. I've seen people wear short dresses to night weddings uh, and vice versa. I think the main thing to keep in mind is uh, the accessories because the accessories are impacted by if it's a day or night ceremony. For example, like you wouldn't wear uh, a Pamela or like a sun hat to a night wedding, right? Um, so I'll explain that a little bit more uh, later on. But uh, in general, like if, you, if you're not sure if you're attending a night or a day wedding, you can uh, check the, the time that the ceremony takes place. Uh, for example, a day wedding, usually the ceremony will be at around 12 or 1, and then you'll eat lunch at 3 or 4. And then for night wedding, the ceremony usually takes place around 6 or 7 p.m., and then you'll eat dinner around 8 to 10 p.m. Rule number three, be careful with colors. So this should go without saying, don't wear white to a wedding. The only person who should be wearing a white dress is the bride. Okay, so that's just rule number one. Um, don't, uh, don't wear black. Black is for funerals. I don't think I've ever seen anybody wear black to a wedding here. Uh, I, I just wouldn't recommend it. Um, in terms of colors based on seasonality and stuff. So uh, normally in winter, you'll see a lot of like deep, rich colors. So forest green, burgundy, navy blue. Uh, in spring and summer, you'll see like fuchsia, kelly green, yellow, uh, floral prints. There's not really a rule as to which colors are appropriate for which season. That's just the trend I notice. You know, if you get a shop or if you go to a shop here to get your dress, you might notice that um, they've got certain color themes that are more prominent uh, depending on the time of year. Number four, adhere to hair accessory protocol. So this is what I mentioned before about day and night wedding. So um, tocados, tocados, um, they're called fascinators in English. Uh, those are the hair accessories that you see. They wear them in the UK. I think they're fabulous. I always wear them to weddings because I don't know, I just think they're so fun. Um, so you can wear fascinators to day or night weddings, but um, you know, just keep in mind if you're attending a night wedding, you're probably gonna be wearing a longer dress and so tocados, you normally don't wear them with a long dress. You wear them with a short dress. So that's why you tend to see them more during day weddings. So I've got some examples of tocados here that I'm gonna show you. So this is one that I had made for my mom. She wore it to my wedding. Uh, you can see underneath that we've got this comb here. And so how it works is you just slide it on your head and it stays in place. Normally you wear your fascinator on the right side because you're being escorted normally on the left side. So if you've got this thing like right here, it's gonna be super awkward and you can't you know, talk to your date. So normally wear it on the right side just for comfort and uh, convenience. Um, this is another togado that I bought. Um, this one was around 50 bucks, I think. So um, it's, it also has the comb as you can see here. 
Um, you can get them for cheaper. Normally they're like maybe 30, 40 euros to 100 euros. I'm gonna tell you a secret though. You can go to a Euro store and you can get one similar to this for like 10 bucks, 10 euros. So if you don't wanna spend, you know, 60 bucks on a hair accessory, go to the Euro store, get one that matches your dress, take a bunch of photos, put them on Facebook, and then when you get home, all your friends are gonna be like, oh my God, girl, you look so European. You'll be like, yes, and it was only 10 bucks. So that's my, my secret tip for you. Um, something else I mentioned before is, uh, you know, Pamela's, they're the, the uh, broad brimmed sun hats that you see. Those are only appropriate for day weddings. And, um, you know, it's kind of common sense. You're not gonna wear a sun hat to a night wedding because there's no sun, right? Um, there's also like protocol or like etiquette rules on when to wear it, when to take it off. So I've got more information about that in my blog if you wanna check it out. Okay, so moving on, let's see. Number five, other accessory tips to keep in mind. So I have never seen a woman bring a purse to a wedding that was not a clutch. And I think that's because, you know, if you're wearing this fabulous outfit, if you have like a big bulky purse with you, it's just gonna take away from it, from like the whole look. So women usually bring clutch, uh, clutch purses or like little dainty purses. I've got an example here for you. This is one that my mom uh, wore to my wedding. Uh, inside, she's got a little strap, so it's comfortable. So, you know, if you wanna just wear it on your shoulder while you're drinking your Spanish wine, um, that works. But my main tip on uh, when it comes to purses is to get something small like this. And it can be any color or fabric or material as long as it looks good with your outfit. When it comes to cover-ups, um, I always wear shawls, personally. Um, so this is an example of one of my shawls. I'm sorry, it's wrinkled, it needs to be steamed. But you can see it's like a sheer fabric. And so what I'll do is uh, when we go to the mass or the ceremony, the wedding ceremony inside of a church, I'll just like pop this over my shoulders. Um, you might notice a lot of other women covering up in churches. It's not mandatory, it's just something some people do. Um, but I like this because it's elegant and um, you know, it's nice if it gets chilly later on in the night. Um, some other popular cover ups are stoles, capes. Um, they also have these little jackets called toreras, which are like very tailored high cut jackets. Um, I also like the faux fur wraps that some women wear, um, especially like for winter and fall weddings, they look really cool. So you'll also want to make sure that you're wearing heels. I think I mentioned this earlier, wedges, flats, I would never wear those to a wedding here because I would feel really underdressed. Um, personally, I don't really like wearing high heels. So what I do is I will go to the wedding, everybody takes photos, everybody looks fabulous. And I will actually bring a like those roll up flats and I'll stick them in my purse or I will stick them in Javi's jacket. And once everybody's finished eating and they go to the dance floor, I will change my shoes and put flats on and dance and no one notices. Uh, you know, you've already taken all your photos. So, you know, if you really don't like wearing heels like me, um, then I would suggest bringing some little flats to change into after, uh, after dinner. So uh, another accessory that you might want to consider wearing is gloves. I think gloves look really elegant. Um, a lot of women wear them here. The, the general rule with gloves is the shorter the sleeve, the longer the glove. Um, there's also some different like etiquette rules that you want to keep on, in mind. Like when is it appropriate to wear them? When do you need to take them off? That sort of thing. So I've written some notes in my blog about that. Um, but generally gloves are, are an accessory that you'll see in like spring, fall and winter weddings. Rule number six, wear something new. So there is this unspoken rule uh, at Spanish weddings that you don't wear the same thing twice. Uh, for people coming from out of the country to attend a wedding, I don't really think this applies to you because, you know, no one's ever seen your outfits before, probably. So, you know, don't worry about it. But if you live in Spain like me and you attend a lot of weddings in the same social circle, uh, normally girls will buy like totally new outfits, totally new accessories for every wedding they attend. If you don't want to do that, you can also rent your look. There's companies like Rental Mode where you can rent an entire outfit with accessories for like 60 bucks. So. That is another option. Rule number seven, consider hiring a hairstylist. So this might seem a little strange, but even if you're not in the bridal party, it is totally normal to get your hair and makeup styled for the wedding. Um, I have a girl who comes to my house, it's like 10 or 15 bucks, she does my hair, it's great. Uh, if you don't have someone local to do your hair and makeup, then uh, you can go to a salon, it's probably 30 or 40 euros. And if you don't want to spend that money uh, on getting you know, your hair and makeup done, then just go on a Pinterest and look up DIY hairstyles. 
which also works and I do that too sometimes. So rule number eight is money makes the best gift. So I think for Americans, this might be a little, I don't know what the word is, like direct. Um, but generally when you receive a wedding invitation in Spain, there's also a little card that the couple includes that has their bank account number. And that's so that you can send them money uh, the week of the wedding. And when it comes to the appropriate, uh, appropriate amount, it's usually between like 75 and 150 euros. Um, Javi and I, for example, we usually always give 100 each. So in total, we'll give the couple 200 euros for the wedding. Uh, if you know the wedding is gonna be like on the expensive side, then you might wanna give a little bit more. If you're traveling overseas to attend the wedding, then you know, you're know you already spending a lot of money to get there. I wouldn't expect someone traveling to my wedding to also give me money. Um, so you know maybe a more sentimental gift would make more sense. If you don't have a hundred bucks to give somebody, then you, know, you can find something else, that's totally fine. Um, and also keep in mind, if you're invited to a wedding as a date, then normally the person who invited you is gonna pay for your part of the gift. Rule number nine, and this is an important one, pace yourself with the drinks. So just to give you an idea of how Spanish weddings work, um, my ceremony was at 1.30 and the bar closed at 12 a.m. I went to a wedding up near Zaragoza, the wedding started at 7 p.m. and I got home at 7 a.m. All right, so you got at least at least five hours of partying and probably more like 10 or 12. Um, so when you're at the wedding, just kind of take it easy with the drinks uh, because you don't want to get, you know, wasty face before the first dance. Um, so normally I will drink beer, uh, then at dinner you have wine, and then after dinner I will start with the copas on the dance floor. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that you got like a marathon ahead of you, so don't go crazy with the alcohol right off the bat. Okay, so rule number 10, and this is the most important rule of the entire list, is to enjoy the experience. So you're traveling overseas, you're going to this wedding, it's a really special day for the couple. This is a really important uh, tradition or event in Spanish culture and society. So just keep an open mind. Don't stress too much about these rules, like they're just there to help you, but you know, just do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and just enjoy the experience. There's gonna be so much great food, music, um, Spanish wine, dancing. Um, so yeah, just enjoy it. So that concludes our 10 rules you need to know to be the perfect wedding guest in Spain. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up below. If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.